Shalom, Alava, and I would like to welcome you to this uh, edition of our uh, Lessons of Hope series. Uh, this is episode 12. We are going to discuss about the topic, a very famous topic, uh, about dealing with difficult passages. And this is one of the challenges that uh, most Christians faced when they study the Bible. They tend to think that the Bible is so hard, so difficult to understand, and, and, and most of the time, we discourage, get discouraged because of uh, the fact that we, we find it so difficult. But today we're going to talk about how to handle that. How, how can we handle difficult passages? What's the right attitude uh, as a Christian or as a student of the Bible that you should have when you study the Bible? So, in the name of Jesus Christ, I would like to welcome you. Welcome, Pastor Kili. Welcome, uh, Chris. Hello. Thank you again for... Uh, sparing your time to come and uh, discuss the Word of God. So before we start, let's uh, seek the Lord in prayer. Mm. Thank you so much, Father, for this time we can come again Amen. and talk about your Word. We pray that you will help us, especially our viewers, so that we will understand uh, about the right attitude uh, when we come to study your Word. This is a matter of life and death for anyone who is seeking you. So we pray that you will give us the right understanding right now so that we will understand your word in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Okay, Pastor Kelly, would you like to, uh, we have a memory verse and Pastor Kelly is going to uh, share the memory verse and uh, also the uh, introductory part of our discussion. Sure. <clears throat> uh, our memory text comes from Second Peter chapter 3. <clears throat> in verses 15 and 16. It says, And consider that the long suffering of our Lord is salvation, as also our beloved brother Paul, according to the wisdom given to him, has written to you, <coughs> as also <clears throat> in all his epistles, speaking in them of these things, in which are some things hard to understand which untaught <clears throat> and unstable people twist to their destruction as they do also the rest of the scriptures. <clears throat> so this is uh, Peter here mm. uh, speaking about Paul. So uh, we all know as Christians that a lot of the difficult passages we find in scripture is from the writings of Paul. Right. So it's good to know that we're not the only ones, even Peter himself a you know a person who's living in Paul's lifetime mm. also saw this mm -hmm. at his time reading this like whoa this is a some <laughs> difficult passages to understand so this is a good um, you know encouragement for the reader mm. that uh, even Peter himself went th through this but when discussing the uh, uh, Paul's letters um, Peter makes this uh, fact that when people don't understand his writings they unfortunately twist it. Yeah. And uh, they, and the Bible calls them ignorant mm -hmm. or unstable uh, people. Uh, they take these difficult passages to understand and they twist it and distort it to their own destruction. Mm -hmm. uh, of course, I'm mm -hmm. pretty sure that they don't think mm -hmm. that they're uh, twisting it to their destruction, <clears throat> but that's the uh, the eventually right. will happen mm. in their twisting of the scriptures. But not only that, Paul's writings, but uh, we're told that also the twisting of the rest of the scriptures. Mm. So when you are not honest and you're not stable, you distort scripture in one place. What will happen is you'll start to do that for the rest of yes. scripture. Or what we, what you can also say is, if you uh, don't understand a certain scripture, or you, or you understand it to be this, but it's incorrect, what it will do, it will lead to a chain of misunderstandings mm. Mm. of other scriptures. Because remember, all of scriptures are connected. Yes. So, if you get it wrong in a certain place, it is very much so that you can get it wrong <laughs> in ample places. And, and <clears throat> anytime you. Yes. So, uh, like, for example, <clears throat> uh, when we're talking about uh, Luke 23, 43, mm. this is the saying of the thief on the cross, mm. when Jesus referred to him, saying, mm. Behold, I say unto thee, 
comma, mm -hmm. today you shall be with me in paradise. Mm. Now, if you don't understand the state of the dead in Scripture, mm. and you have a certain perception mm. or a wrong perception of what happens when someone dies in Scripture, you'll perceive this as right when they die, they go straight, they to, go to, straight to heaven, mm. to paradise. So this is an example of if you have a misunderstanding in one place, it will lead to mm. misunderstandings everywhere mm. else uh, when it comes to this. Uh, but we know in John chapter 20, verse 17, mm. when Jesus resurrected, he tells Mary, don't cling to me mm. because I have not yet ascended to mm. the Father. So we know that when Jesus died, he did not go to heaven. Mm. But he stayed in the grave, mm. which is essentially what is the state of the dead there. Mm. Uh, another one is that we, another example is Colossians chapter 2, verse 14 to 16. And this is where Paul, another one of Paul's mm. writings, is referring to the Sabbath. Mm. Or at least the reader, a lot of people today believe that Paul's referring to the seventh day Sabbath. Mm -hmm. Right? right. So they, a, a lot of the people who don't believe that the Sabbath is relevant anymore, when they read this, it says, having wiped out the handwriting of requirements that was against us, which was contrary to us, and he has taken out of the way, having nailed it to the cross, referring to the law, which includes the Sabbath, right? So they read these verses, and then they also down to verse 16, so let no one judge you in food or in drink or regarding a festival or a new moon or right. Sabbaths. Mm -hmm. So if you don't have the correct understanding yes. of the validity of the Sabbath mm. till this day, you'll read this text mm -hmm. as well as saying, oh, see, this affirms that uh, this, the change of the Sabbath is correct and that the, there's a new Sabbath at the resurrection yeah. of Jesus. So as, a matter of fact, as a matter of fact, that's the main text that uh, yes. most uh, Sunday yes. keepers are. Absolutely. And of course, course we'll, we'll get into it in the, when we mm. get into the rest of le the, the lesson mm. where we utilize Scripture to mm. interpret Scripture. Uh, you'll know that in Deuteronomy 31, 24 to 26, mm. it tells us uh, what this handwriting mm -hmm. was. And this handwriting was obviously was the uh, the uh, laws that mm. regards to the ceremonial laws, mm. not the Decalogue or the Ten Commandments, right. the moral law of God. So uh, these are just examples that uh, we have when you get it wrong in one place it's going to lead you to a chain of yes. uh, misunderstandings for the rest of Scripture. So um, what we're basically going to be talking about in the rest of our lesson here is what might be the reasons for these challenges and how, as faithful seekers of truth from the Word of God, can we work through them? As we were discussing before, our lesson is going to determine the attitude determines basically how this book will be unlocked for us. What is the attitude we approach right. Scripture? But more importantly, what we're going to be also uh, um, tackling or discussing is that um, not allowing these small number of difficult mm. texts or mis uh, hard texts to, to understand, don't allow that to cause you to throw out the whole book mm. as not valuable, not uh, authentic, or mm. not real, or not uh, in any way reliable in regards to being the authority of mm. God's Word. So uh, that's what the Sabbath lesson takes yeah. us off with. Amen. Okay, let's move on to uh, possible reasons for apparent contradictions uh, in uh, our interpretation of the Bible. Yeah, uh, this, uh, this brings us to the, uh, <coughs> to the uh, consideration of of what uh, Peter starts to mm. to uh, to appeal to us about scripture and and the thing that that um, that's not you know completely shown in here, but it's alluded to is when Peter says, "Consider that the long suffering of our Lord is salvation." It, it, it's a suggestion that that if if you're dealing with with studying scripture. Mm. You need to to understand uh, why you're studying scripture. So, the apostle Paul, since Peter is referring to him, mm. it's interesting that when you take First uh, Timothy, First um, Timothy, um, the whole book of First Timothy, and compare it with Second Peter, it's almost identical in their approaches. Uh, how 
Peter is approaching the the same the same issue, dealing with 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 the discrepancy of of of, of scripture by those who study it, uh, not because scripture is 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 meant to be hard to understand, mm. but because there are uh, environmental uh, elements that is causing the, 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 the word, the, the clarity of the word of God to become understood by those who are uh, dealing with it. So the, 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 primary, uh, the primary focus of the presentation both in Paul and in Peter seems to be one has to have a, 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 a concept of salvation in order for one to, 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 to begin to, to deal or, or, or enter into the study of Scripture. It, it, Peter alludes to the, to the class that's, where he says, um, the things that are hard to understand, which untaught and unstable people twist to their own destruction. Mm. Uh, it, he's identifying a group of people whose intention is to twist the Word of God uh, it, it, or forcing, like the, the King James Version says, rest the Word of God. In other words, to force meaning into the Word of God. And when they force it, they, they, they're, 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 they're practicing or they're, they're actually forcing it in the presence of other people. And, and that's where the, 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 the principle of false teaching comes from. Mm. When one studies the Word of God for an ulterior motive, mm. who is not primarily interested in neither his salvation or anybody else's salvation, and then he ends up twisting the Word of God. And it creates a state of difficulty for not only himself, because that's what Peter says here, who twisted to their own destruction, as they also the rest of Scripture. See, in other words, those who, 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 who mishandle the Word of God mm. are not intending to gain a clarity of salvation but they have another purpose for it yeah. and the purpose is to mislead others mm -hmm. so the attitude of us going to scripture including the awareness that there are people who are twisting scriptures therefore we must be aware uh, of, of of the premise of why we go so in 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 in, in second timothy um Paul uses the um, the metaphor of a soldier, mm. you know, and he says, uh, "Thou therefore, my son, be strong in the grace that is in Christ Jesus." It's interesting because he starts with the same kind of line as Peter starts with, when Peter says, "Consider that the long suffering of our Lord is salvation." But salvation is is the grace of God in Christ Jesus. So mm. he's saying, if if you don't have your sights. Uh, pinned on, on Christ as your salvation, the rest of Scripture is going to be so, so, so dark, so foreign, mm. so impossible for you to, to penetrate. But he says, Be strong in the grace that is in Christ Jesus. Thou therefore endure hardness as a good soldier of Jesus Christ. So one has to, to get into the, 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 the search of Scriptures like a soldier does. Uh, you have to endure the hardness. In other words, th there's a reason why you were drawn to the Word of God. Mm. You, you know, both Peter and Paul were drawn to the Word of God. There's a reason why. Because they grew up in an environment where the knowledge of the salvation of God was prevalent. Yet, the activity and the manifestation of life in those communities was saying the opposite, you know, and, and, and we know that because we know that when, when, when Christ came on the scene, even Peter was struggling with understand of the, understanding the, the, the salvation that is in Christ Jesus. But he emphasizes that because that is the core of the whole scripture. Mm. In order for you to, to, to have a, a spiritual experience of the Spirit disseminating the truth in your, in your mind, you have to have the deep and, 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 and intense desire to be saved from sin. Mm. And if you don't have that, then your, your, your taking on Scripture is not going to be an, a pleasant experience. So first off, we, we, we want to say that as a soldier, Paul is 
saying to Timothy, you must know your mission. You must know your mission. If you don't know your mission, it's hard for you to, 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 to understand Scripture. And then, you know, he goes on and says, No man that warreth entangleth himself with the affairs of this life, that he may please him who have chosen him to be a soldier. So not only you must know your mission, you must know who you got your mission from. Mm. You know? And, then, and if a man also strive for mastery, yet he is not crowned except he strive lawfully. Mm. So there are rules to, to, to you comprehending Scripture. You know, it's not just something you can, right. you, know, you, you cannot just walk off the street and, you know, <laughs> and, and take the Bible and sit down and read it and, and, and enjoy it, you know. No, you're going to encounter immediately that there's something different about the book mm. that you're reading. And therefore, you might, you might have the experience of the, uh, 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 of the Ethiopian, yes. where you need assistance to be helped along with that. So not only you should know your mission, you should know your weapon. Mm. In other words, you should know scripture. Uh, and, and, and Paul uh, uh, c continues down the line. He has a lot of different things that he says here. Consider what I say. Remember that Jesus Christ is seed of David. You know, I suffer a lot, and then therefore I endured all things for the elect's sake, you know, so that they may obtain the salvation which is in Christ. And then it says, it is a faithful saying, if we suffer, we shall also reign with him. We deny, if we deny him, he also deny us, you know. So now of these things, he says in verse 14, put them in remembrance, charging them before the Lord that they strive not about words to no profit. So here is... It, 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 Timothy had, had to know his mission. His mm. mission was not only to, to, to learn Scripture, mm -hmm. but he also had to teach Scripture. Mm. Amen. He had to, to share that Scripture for others in order for them to, to gain mm. the salvation that he himself is gaining from Scripture. So, you know, and then at the same time, you, you, you got to know your enemy. Mm. Yeah. You know, if, if you know your mission, you know your weapon, and you know your enemy, you're a soldier. Amen. You know? And, and, and these are the kinds of things that we need to speak about when we're, 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 we're talking about the, 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 the approach or the attitude to the Word of God in order for you to deal with, 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 with the hard, hard mm -hmm. to understand uh, items that are in there. You know, when we, we speak about that, we were, we're alluding to Peter. Peter was struggling with, with prejudice mm. in his heart. And that's why, you know, we sometimes look at the record yeah. in, in the book of mm. Acts mm. where Peter is, and, and the council of, of the disciples were dealing with the issue of circumcision. Mm. And we find there that, 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 that Peter and, and James were the presenters and Paul and Barnabas were, were also the, the, the uh, participants of that same conference. Uh, but we, we see that they were struggling with that issue, but the scriptures was the solution for them. They, you know, James reminded them, it's according to Scripture that Christ did rebuild the, 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 the house of David, mm -hmm. you know, that he did come in the, in the flesh. So he's talking about the, you know, the, 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 the solution to all our difficulties in, in, in Scripture. If we, if we find difficulties in Scripture, we must take ourselves to, to understand the, the, the gospel of salvation. If we understand the gospel of salvation that is in Jesus Christ, most or if not all of the uh, appropriate mm. scriptures that pertains to your personal experience will, will be enlightening you because you're looking for those solutions. Mm. You know? and, 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 and that's where the word of God is, 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 is intended to, to apply to my life. It's, it's, it, the word of God is not intended as a weapon in my hand so that I can direct your life. No. The Word of God is, is a weapon in my hand so that I can work out my salvation. And if that can happen, then you can serve and minister to the need of others because you appropriately uh, are dealing with, with, with the reasons why there are contradictions. Mm. First, people who do not understand that the, 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 the primary need of studying Scripture is for their salvation, will have a lot of contradictions to, to yeah. tangle with, mm -hmm. more than enough. And that brings us to our next uh, this, uh, point, where uh, the right attitude. Uh, because some people who are, who are having that problem don't have this, uh, these are virtues as a Christian. Uh, honesty and carefulness when yeah. you study the Bible. 
Yeah, and, and, and just before we, mm. we head into that, I think it's important also in addition to what Elder was mm. sharing is the possible reasons for apparent contradictions is number one, we're finite human beings yeah. that's trying to understand an infinite mm. God. So obviously there's going to be some right. difficulty involved in that. Mm -hmm. And number two, to also remember that some discrepancies in scripture might be due to minor error, errors mm -hmm. from copyists yes. and uh, translators. Trans yeah. So I think that's in addition to yes. share that. Consider those yes. that as you're reading scripture, because there might be a viewer that's a skeptic, mm -hmm. but he's willing to learn. But then he notices that there's some discrepancies right. in Scripture. So keep that in mind, mm. that number one, the, that uh, the revelation that was given to these writers, mm. it's what's inspired, mm -hmm. not necessarily the words yes. that are put down, yes. which is the cause mm -hmm. of some of these discrepancies. So I think that's important also to yes, add to yes. that. And, and especially <clears throat> while we are, uh, this is a secondary, because mm -hmm. we had uh, the original language. Right. was in Hebrew, yes. Aramaic, and Greek. Yes. But now we read it in, in English, English and in Samoan, no, and there's a lot of, you know, there's transition in yes. that. There's a possibility of discrepancies. You know, but don't throw out the whole no. Bible just because yes. of those. Yeah. Don't get stuck on it. Right, right. <laughs> get stuck on yes. it too. And right. people that do get stuck on it, that's where yeah. Elder was sharing the motive, right? Mm. That, uh, okay. All right, so Monday dealing with difficulties honestly and carefully. And mm. that's definitely, when you're coming to Scripture, you definitely have to come with an honest uh, motive to really want to understand yes. uh, what the book is mm -hmm. saying and what it's relevant to us. If you're approaching it in a, in a, in a mindset of, I'm not really wanting mm. to learn it, I just want to look for things to mm. discredit it, yeah. you're going to find things to discredit yeah. it. You know? uh, even sometimes if there's even doctrinal mm. differences within mm -hmm. the church, some people might be on one side of the mm. issue, so other people might be on the other side of the issue. And what do they do when they look in the Bible? They look in the Bible for the points that prove their side. Very biased. Biased, mm -hmm. and they're not honest mm -hmm. with just allowing the Scripture to speak for itself. So mm. it's very, so we have to uh, be very uh, honest in how we approach the Scriptures and wanting to earnestly learn uh, what the Bible is saying. But also when you uh, read the Scriptures, read it carefully yes uh, understand especially when you read the gospels jesus is very very intentional mm. in the words he uses yes. so when you reading the red letters in your mm. bible read it carefully mm. because jesus always means something greater than what he's saying mm. there so especially uh, one example is for example is when uh, Peter, I believe it was Peter that asked Jesus, Jesus, how many times should we forgive our brother right. when he sins against mm. us? Um, you know, up, up to, uh, you know, seven times. And Jesus says, uh, verily I say unto you, not seven times, but 70 times seven. Now, a casual reader who's not reading carefully will just <laughs> read that and say, wow, Jesus just must have plucked a number out of the air and just <laughs> said, no, 70 times, as if it was random. But if you understand, understand that Jesus, he knew his Bible. Mm. He knew when he came down to this earth, when, you, when we understand the uh, prophecy of the 70 weeks mm. given for the Jews, that when Jesus came and he was baptized, mm. there was only seven more years left in that mm. prophecy. Understanding that that prophecy, the 70-week prophecy, was literally 490 mm. years. Mm -hmm. This is how long God mm. gave Israel kind of like in a sense to you know, overcome, right. mm -hmm. and you know. So when Jesus says 70 times 7, when you do the math, that's 490 mm -hmm. years. If the disciples were listening carefully, they would have been like, wow, that's right. 490 years is how much he gave, God has given to mm -hmm. us, to, you know, what the book of Daniel says, mm -hmm. what they were supposed to do, but that they weren't doing. Mm -hmm. So Jesus is very intentional. Mm -hmm. Read it very carefully, uh, as well as, honestly, it gives us some text here. First Chronicles uh, 29, as we read these texts, it'll give us uh, some principles. Uh, the question is, what are these texts saying that can apply to the question of how we deal with difficult passages? So let's take a look at these uh, texts here. Let's take a look at the first one, which is First Chronicles uh, 29 and verse 17. 17. Notice what the Bible says here. It says, I, I know also, my God, that thou triest the heart, 
and has pleasure in uprightness. As for me, in the uprightness of mine heart, I have willingly offered all these things, and now have I seen with joy thy people, which are present here, to offer willingly unto thee. So what we're, the first principle that we're learning from First Chronicles 29, 17, in regards to how we deal with difficult passages, is we must be willing to surrender our heart to the truths that we read. Uh, this is the principle that we're extracting from First Chronicles 29, 17, that uh, God wants for us to, um, you know, where it says again here, that thou triest the heart and has pleasure in uprightness. As for me, in the uprightness of mine heart, I have willingly offered all these mm. things. So you have to be willing to... Um, Follow the uprightness in which you're seeking. So when you're coming right. to Scripture, uh, Scripture is going to teach you the way of uprightness. Mm -hmm. But you have to be willing mm -hmm. to surrender that when you're coming to Scripture. Mm -hmm. So there's a willingness yes. uh, to conform to the truths mm -hmm. that uh, you discover Amen. in Scripture. Uh, Proverbs 2 and verse 7. It says, He layeth up sound wisdom for the righteous. He is a shield to them that walk uprightly. So notice that sound wisdom is for those who are righteous. So mm. uh, there's a level of, uh, of conformity in which is needed to understand Scripture. Mm -hmm. So if you're living a life of sin and you then try to read the Scripture, you're not going to understand it. No. You know, because 1 Corinthians 2 and verse 14 says, But the natural man does mm. not receive the things yes. of the Spirit of God, yes. for they are foolishness to him, mm. nor can he know them because they are spiritually yes. discerned. Yes. So this is uh, key for us to understand that there's a level of obedience there's, that we need to conform to, that we need to do, so that when we read Scripture, understanding is there. Why? Because when we're in obedience to the Lord, the highway of uh, information from heaven to your mind is wide open. We're told in Isaiah 59 that sin or iniquity cuts us off right. from God. So if we're living in sin and you try to study the Bible, mm -hmm. it's not going to work. Mm -hmm. And in fact, you'll misinterpret, mm -hmm. right? So if you notice uh, that this is a uh, key here in Proverbs 2 verse 7. Last text here, uh, 1 Timothy 4.16 uh, principle here is... Let me read that for you. Take heed unto thyself mm. and unto the doctrine. Continue in them. For in doing this, thou shalt save thyself and them that hear thee. So as you're willing to submit to whatever scripture says, uh, obeying what the scripture says, mm. continue to do that and always check yourself. You know, when I'm coming to the scriptures, you know, uh, sometimes we get to a level of arrogance where we just open it and start reading right. it without prayer mm -hmm. as if because we reach a certain level of articulation mm -hmm. or intelligence or education. Mm -hmm. And then all of a sudden you just pop this thing yeah. open and start reading yeah. like, oh, yeah, I know that. No, 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 no. <laughs> uh, always uh, check yourself at the door yes. and uh, make sure that you come to Scripture, number one, with a willingness to surrender to the mm -hmm. truths you discover. Uh, obey the truths mm. that the Lord revealed to you and uh, always check yourself at the door when coming to Scripture. Continue in the doctrine that you're doing this and that sh thou shalt save thyself. So uh, this is what we're looking at here when we're talking about the principles of how to deal with difficult passages. Just three that are given there from those three passages. There are more, mm. but I think that sums it up right there. I think this is important to say, honest people will deal with Bible difficulties in such a way that they are careful not to present information out of context, distort the truth with loaded language, or mislead others by means of manipulating evidence. Mm. So that's key in regards to just the honesty of uh, giving what Scripture says, and don't distort it to your own biases, yes. environment you grew up, culture settings. Um, you know, your favorite preacher, right. whatever it is, but let scripture be. And sometimes uh, preachers and, 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 you know, some students of the Bible use these texts to attack another person. Yes, exactly. When you 
you know, have something against another person, they use a Bible, yes. a Bible text. But that's not a right motive. Right? Absolutely. Yeah, it's like wrong. when when we're reading the Bible, this is a key point. Mm-hmm. When you're reading the Bible, you're supposed to read it as if it's talking to you. Mm-hmm. But more often than not, and especially if we're preachers, you're reading the Bible and say, oh, that's a good point for, <laughs> you know. And then when it gets to this point in my sermon, I'm going to, you know, because this is what they're doing in church. Yes. But you're supposed to receive it for yourself. Mm-hmm. First, that's why it says, check yourself, take heed unto yeah, thyself. Yeah. Mm. When you read the scriptures, that's who it's for first. Mm. And then the lessons you learn for yourself, that's what I, I love to say to my, uh, uh, the little church that I uh, currently look over, is I say, I read the passage this, uh, and create the sermon according to what the Lord showed for my life, mm. and then I share it with you. And whatever you do that with it, that's between you and the Lord. Yeah. So I, I believe that that's, uh, uh, an honest mm-hmm. and careful way right. to, you know, read and then deliver, uh, disseminate. That brings us to a, yeah. another, uh, uh, you know, attitude, mm-hmm. uh, and that is to approach the Bible with humility. Mm-hmm. Would yeah. you like to speak on that? Please? Yeah, because the Bible is is a transformational book. Right. And right. We, we we go back to this so that we don't lose sight of it. The Bible is intended so that it will transform our lives mm. from sinners to non-sinners mm. or saints, whichever mm. word you you, mm. you prefer. Uh, but that's the purpose of Scripture. Mm. And one of the fruits of Scripture mm. taking its toll in your life, if we can use that phrase, mm-hmm. uh, or making an impact in your life, yeah. is that it humbles you. Mm-hmm. Uh, and, and and the spirit that uh, 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 that 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 most applicable to our dealing with scriptures in 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 the transformation of your uh, proud and and mm. and yeah. you know and and self sufficient person mm. yeah. is when you're humble you're teachable mm-hmm. yes so we need to understand that 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 we're consulting the word of God because. W- we we were rebellious to to the word of God prior to our coming to it, mm. and so therefore we need to be instructed, yeah. so that we can uh, uh, we can comprehend and understand the process of transformation mm-hmm. that that occurs in our lives as we encounter the power of the mm. word of God. Because the word of God is not not just a textbook like nope. you were yes. mentioning, uh, you know. Uh, yeah. uh, before we, we started taping, because the, the, the Bible is the power of the Word of God. Mm. It's packed with the power, the supernatural mm. power of God. It was given so that it would transform mm-hmm. our lives. And no transformation, you know, so appropriate to us than uh, humility, you know, so that we can be teachable. And so right. James puts it this way. I just read a couple of verses mm. here. And in James chapter 3, verse 13, I, I begin to read a couple who says, Who is a wise man and 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 dude with knowledge among you? Well, let him show out of a good conversation his works with meekness mm. of wisdom. Amen. Uh, so if you think you you, you, you have knowledge and, and you don't have, you know, meekness in your conversation, you know, your knowledge can be looked upon uh, by others as attacking, you know, mm. as an attack on them. Or as a look down or an insult, you know, rather mm. than 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 a uh, you know uh, than edifying. Mm. And but if ye if ye have bitter envying and strife in your hearts, glory not and lie not against the truth. So this is this uh, this is pivotal to, to to being humble because if we're not humble, then you know we 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 we, we take our natural uh, attitudes into our search of scriptures, but it doesn't, it doesn't transform our lives. Uh, it, it, it will just make us, uh, uh, you know, uh, worse. So this wisdom, and, 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 and Paul says here, uh, uh, and James says here, that this wisdom descendeth not from above, but is earthly, sensual, and devilish. So you notice that these are the elements of the flesh. Mm-hmm. And, 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 and he mentioned it because right. you, we need to, to identify these things as we mm-hmm. as we read and search scriptures. So if we're having difficulties with understanding scripture, it's because these elements of the natural mm-hmm. person is overwhelming us, you know. And then he says, For where ending and strife is, there is confusion in every evil work. 
But the wisdom that is from above is first pure, then peaceable, gentle, and easy to be entreated, full of mercy and good fruits, without partiality and without hypocrisy. Mm -hmm. so, you know, it's just packed, you know. <laughs> yeah. It just continues to right hammer there. out, yes. you know, the, 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 yeah. the negatives and mm -hmm. the positives of, of, of the humble attitude and the proud attitude mm -hmm. that we take into, into Scripture. So there's a lot of proud people that like to use Scriptures. To, to, to you know to to engage in heated arguments mm. and accusations and mm. you know and using it as evidence of you know of, of condemnation mm. to those who are professing the name mm -hmm. of Christ mm. because this is an, an ever an ever occurring and, and existing issue in the world as we deal with the Word of God it's the coexistence of evil and righteousness mm. you know and it's manifested in the lives of the two classes of people yes. so yes. we always have to be aware of these things because if we're not then we can't you know mm. we, we can't find ourselves to be teachable and so the last parts of of James comes for us is but he giveth and he says he giveth more grace which is Christ wherefore he saith God resisteth the proud but giveth grace unto the humble mm -hmm. so God gives us grace when we're humble submit yourselves therefore to god resist the devil and he will flee from you like pastor was mm -hmm. saying if you're mm -hmm. sinning you know or if you know if, if you're if you're walking in the flesh then you're going to have you, you you're going to expect a lot of issues from reading scripture draw mm -hmm. nigh to god which is a very good uh, uh, very fundamental uh, um, principle to to understanding scripture Draw nigh to God, and He will draw nigh to you. Mm -hmm. Cleanse your hands, ye sinners, and purify your hearts, ye double-minded. You know, mm -hmm. the, uh, a lot of these are practical things yes. that, that we notice. Uh, be afflicted and mourn and weep. Let your laughter be turned to mourning and your joy to heaviness. Yep. Humble yourselves in the sight of the Lord, and He shall lift you up. Mm -hmm. Amen. Amen. So a lot, of, lot to say about mm -hmm. you know the transformation in ourselves <coughs> in, in in humility mm. and very good advice. Amen. Yes, it, the uh, humility, uh, uh, for a large part <coughs> of its expression, how it's manifested, mm. is manifested in the obedience mm. unto God. Yes. Arrogance is, no, I have my own way yeah. of doing things. I'm going to do it my way because I know everything. So when we disobey God, in a sense, we're saying, uh, I don't really, mm -hmm. I know what I'm doing. Right. I don't need you to tell me what I'm doing. Eh, I'm sure you guys can relate in regards to even parental yes. relationship with children, how they might, you know, they're, they're, they're very much immature in, in this life. Yes. You, uh, parents have lived a while in this life, but they, it doesn't stop them from kind of looking up at you and say, I don't think you know what you're doing. <laughs> you <know? laughs> and it's the same way with us and God, you know? Yes. Yes. And um, it's uh, it can definitely happen. So there's a level of we have the obedience is crucial to understanding scripture. Yes. I hear this question a lot of, from young people. They say, "Man, every time I read the Bible, I have to read it over and over and over because I don't understand it." Yeah. I was like, "So then I I, I, I this is the principle that I, mm. I tell them. I was like, guys, there's a level whatever light God is giving mm. you, obey it. Mm. He'll give you more." understand it if you don't obey it mm. he's not going to give you more. right very true you know? so this disciples this happened to the disciples mm. mark 8 verse 17 but jesus being aware of it said to them why do you reason because you have no bread do you not perceive nor understand is your heart still mm. hardened so the hardening of the heart is caused by disobedience yes this can lead to not understanding the word uh, yes because <clears throat> when you're when you're humble it makes your heart teachable yes when you are have that pride right nobody will be able to teach you mm -hmm. <laughs> of anything <laughs> right because you always think you're right you yes. know everything <laughs> yeah but so let's move on to uh determination and patience mm -hmm. yeah. it's one of the the virtue or, or, or discipline that you should have yes uh, galatians 6 verse 9 says this and let us not be weary in well-doing for in due season we shall reap if we faint not so the question is, why are determination and patience important in solving some of these difficult texts mm. that we run into? So uh, uh, we live in a society that now we love the quick. Mm. We want everything quick, fast. Um, and anything that takes longer than mm. the time frame that we're used to, um, 
we just kind of like, okay, never mind. Um, it even happens in church, mm -hmm. you know. Um, sermon's too long. Uh, I don't want to really follow. I just want, what's the point? Mm -hmm. I just want, I want the social media sermon. A one-liner, <laughs> and then that's it. I get it. Let me go home. I don't want to go through the... That's the that's a people today's preference. Right. They want short sermons. Yes. <laughs> they, they don't want to go through the longevity of the study. They don't have the patience to do it. Uh, so when it so in this same time of mindset, they come to the Bible mm. and they run to a difficult text. Instead of spending the time to find out what's what's going on with this, it's like ah, oh, never mind, <laughs> <laughs> because they want the quick, you know, the quick answer. Uh, another way they do a quick answer is, and this could be also happening with mm. our viewers, is they don't want to study the lesson. They'll just watch us, watch. and then we give, we give them all the answers. <laughs> and that's, that's not a, okay either. We are supposed to be a, a uh, addition. Mm -hmm to your personal yes. studies, but not a, a replacement mm -hmm. <laughs> for your studies. Very true. So uh, real achievement always requires uh, tenacity. In fact, that you cannot, you know, there's nothing worth uh, having in this world that you don't work for. Mm. You know, that's why there's so much uh, exuberance and joy when you cross that line and get your degree mm. because you work so hard for right. it, you know, especially when you go into collegiate mm -hmm. levels, you work so hard mm -hmm. for it because you've diligently did, you right. persevered through your studies. So when we do that for the Bible and mm. then the Lord reveals to you because you persevered, mm -hmm. you just like, Lord, there's something that's missing here. It's not you, it's mm. me. Mm. So help me unblock mm -hmm. what I'm not seeing here. And when you come to the conclusion of any subject that you're searching in Bible, it's so like, yes, right. and you can't wait to share it, you mm -hmm. know? So this is why a lot of times um, when we have the church today, um, they're not appreciative of the information that's disseminated to them yes. because they didn't work for it. Yes. They didn't study it themselves. Yes. They got the easy answer mm -hmm. on the you know, sermon, they say, oh, what was the answer to that again? And mm -hmm. they look up uh, a mm -hmm. sermon or what mm -hmm. another person mm -hmm. said, but instead of looking at themselves, mm -hmm. it, there's something about having that because you, the Lord, you work with the Lord to mm -hmm. find that answer. Mm -hmm. You appreciate it more and you yes. keep it more. Yes. Versus, oh yeah, I learned that from this preacher and that mm -hmm. preacher and that preacher. And then there's something about that that uh, you don't appreciate it as much. Right when you don't work for it. Mm -hmm. And so, uh, uh, and what I mean by work for it, I'm meaning in cooperation with mm -hmm. the Holy Spirit, following the principles mm -hmm. of our lesson, we're mining the Bible and, mm -hmm. and bringing out the gold nuggets that the mm -hmm. Lord wants us to find. And then of course, sharing those with others. So patience is a, is a virtue of the saints in the last days. Yes. We're told yes. in the book of Revelations, here yes. are the patience, patience of the of saints. Mm -hmm. Here are they that keep the commandments of God and have the faith of mm -hmm. Jesus. So it's good for us to have patience. There are texts that mm -hmm. are not just plain on its, uh, on its writing. A lot of them are. So don't throw out the whole Bible mm -hmm. just because of that one or two texts that you can't mm -hmm. seem to figure out. But there are texts in Scripture that are difficult to understand in its uh, plain reading. But allow the Bible to interpret itself. Right. Search, dig, be patient, be diligent, and uh, the Bible tells us study to show thyself approved. Mm. You know, and that's uh, invoking a process that's not a five-minute thing. Mm -hmm. It can take. Uh, I mean, put it this way: all the information we have mm. today, the doctrines that we teach as a church. It is the hard work of the pioneers before us yes. who didn't have Google, <laughs> who didn't Very have, true. you know, we're so lucky because yeah. of the sake of time, we can just press a button, the text comes up. Mm. They had to look through that. They had mm. to go through concordance. They had yes. to uh, tie all this thing together and all this work. And mm. then we take it and say, wow, that's how they mm. got it. So there's something about, again, the the results of the faith today is the patience of the saints, mm. of the pioneers. Mm to work through this. Not just our pioneers, mm -hmm. by the way, uh, the Protestant Reformation, mm -hmm. all the way back to, you know, the right. uh, apostles, the apostles mm -hmm. but even onto the translating of the Bible to the English language. Yes. Do you know how patient yes. that man had That's to be right. to just like, <laughs> okay, you know? Yeah, so, to write it down. Write it down and Use make sure, ink. yes, and make sure that it's correctly interpreted. Mm -hmm. 
I don't think we un- really appreciate yes. that level of commitment, commitment and really digging into the work. That's the mm. fundamental truth mm. that we need to, to, <clears throat> to understand. Mm-hmm. You, you have to completely uh, die for the Word of God. Mm. I mean, you have, to, you have to literally be at, at your end, at, at your wit's end, mm. you know, where you have, n- you have nothing but the, you hit the wall, you mm. hit the yes. bottom, right? Yes. You know, that's yes. why it's so important that, that when we get to that point, then we, we come to the, to, to the juncture of life where we need to, to, to make a decision, mm. to be decided, mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. you know. That's why we, we, it, once we, we approach the Word of God, we must have that determination. Yes. But that determination is, is spurred on and it's motivated by our deep need yes. mm-hmm. to be helped, yeah. mm-hmm. to be saved, that we know that we have sunk it. Right. We know that we have hit bottom. Right. We know we have no answers. Yes. We know we have no solutions. Right. And the only thing left for us is looking up mm-hmm. to God. And that's, the, uh, and that's the, the conclusion of our lesson for this week. Mm-hmm. It brings us to the prayer. Mm-hmm. Because if, right. if we truly want to to to, to harvest the, the 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 benefits of Scripture yeah. and its purpose of why God gave it to us, then we must humble ourselves before God mm-hmm. and ask God. Right. In my experience, the first thing that I needed to do in order for the Word of God to open up in my heart and for the Word of God to become important in my life was for me to 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 open my mouth and ask God. Mm. to help me right. to, to, to consider and, and, have, and, and, and show me grace and mercy for, for my conditions mm. and, 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 and where my life has gone to and, and, and my need and when, and when that was spoken from my heart mm. then I began to experience my journey with the word of God mm-hmm. that has only increased and not decreased yeah. and praying kneeling down and asking God honestly and genuinely to consider your ignorance and consider your, 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 your pride, you know, consider your, your wickedness and your evilness and your helplessness. It's the only way that, 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 that you can experience a, 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 you know, a, a clarity like, like the Word says. He has brought us from darkness. Mm-hmm. To the kingdom of his, uh, uh, to the to the kingdom of light, mm. the kingdom of his son, and that's what we need to have. And we and, and without prayer we can't do it yes. because we must be spirit led. Mm-hmm. We, we it, this, the author of the, of the scripture is is not Peter, not Paul, nope. not Moses. It's the Holy Spirit. Yes. Mm-hmm. Holy men of God were inspired by the Spirit of God. Yeah. It is God that wrote this book, yeah. and it is He that we must appeal to in order for us mm. to truly experience. Because at the end of the day, it's not your studious practice of searching scripture and paying attention to all the details and the particularities of words right. that saves you. Mm. Right. It's your knowing of Christ in a personal mm. manner, that yeah. you know Jesus. Yes. Yeah. If you don't know Jesus, yeah. you are lost. Mm-hmm. Uh, as a matter of fact, that's, that's primary in your search. Yes. Cause, because if you're, if you're looking for answers on mm. certain things in what's going on, mm-hmm. you know, that's all you know. Right. But you're supposed to know the person, Yes. the person that's of right. Jesus Christ. And, and that experience is a very personal experience. Mm-hmm. And every one of us who have that experience knows mm-hmm. that it's not your head knowledge of yeah. Scripture yeah. That's, mm-hmm. that, that, that allows Christ to live in you. Yeah. Yeah. It's, your, it's your spirit right. knowledge yes. of Jesus. Mm-hmm. Yes that saves you and, 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 and sustains you throughout your daily life. Mm. Yeah. Amen. Moment by moment. Yeah. Amen. Do you have any final say? No, do? yeah. Uh, I mean, uh, what comes to mind yeah. is Daniel chapter 2, mm. when the vision, uh, the dream, Nebuchadnezzar's mm. dream, and he was demanding, tell me the dream, tell me the vision. And uh, no one could do it, but Daniel understood exactly what he needed to do, got together with like-minded people, mm. uh, uh, with his friends, um, Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego, or uh, Hananiah, Mishael, and Azariah, and he said, let's pray. Mm. And the vision was revealed to them. What was that vision? It was a prophetic vision, Mm. right? So God's word is a prophetic word. People can read this and not understand it. Mm -hmm. Just like uh, that vision, 
could not be understood until God revealed to them, number one, what the vision was, but number two, what it meant. Mm -hmm. So uh, that's a primary example uh, in Scripture of one of the prominent figures in historical mm -hmm. figures of Scripture understanding that he prayed. And that was his habit. He prayed three times a day. So, mm -hmm. And the Bible tells us to pray without ceasing. So prayer is a very much a connection. It's bringing us up to where God is, mm -hmm. and then he just fills our mind Amen. with understanding. Amen. You know, my friends, it's very important that we have the uh, right uh, foundational understanding of how to study the Bible, how to approach the Bible in the right attitude, mm -hmm. uh, right. with the right attitude. Yep. Um, you know, in Matthew 24, Jesus said that in the last days, there's going to be uh, a lot of false prophets and false teachers. Well, you, s you look around today on the social media, especially during the lockdown. Mm -hmm. All of a sudden, I see a lot of new faces on uh, Facebook teaching the Word, teaching the Bible. Right. I mean, I'm not talking about pastors, but there are, there's a lot of other people now uh, claiming to be mm -hmm. this person, this person, yeah. teaching the Word. Uh, I kind of browsed through some of the sermons, and I was amazed. Wow, these guys can actually do this, you know, just open the Word and just come out and right. totally different uh, right interpretation of the Bible. Yes. And that's what I mean, you know. Mm -hmm. uh, you can do whatever you want with the Bible, mm -hmm. but you know, uh, the fruits will tell. Yeah. Uh, um, you know, in a nutshell of what we're talking about, yeah. we must have the fruits of the Holy Spirit. Because yeah. patience, faithfulness, mm -hmm. and all that love, joy, peace. It, in also. order for us to study the, the, the yes. Word of God mm -hmm. uh, with a f free mind, free spirit, you know, easy understanding of the Word of God. Mm -hmm. You must have the Holy Spirit in us, and it should bear those fruits in us, and Amen. if we study the Word, you know, it should be okay. Yes. Amen. Yes. Okay, so um, that's our study today, Amen. and hopefully you learn something very important today in your search for truth mm -hmm. and the study of the Word of God. Uh, Pastor Giri, would you like to pray sure. for our audience and us? Father, we are so thankful for this wonderful study and discussion to help each and every one of us in dealing with difficult scriptures, passages, texts in your word. And that just because there are difficult texts, passages in your word, that we are not to discredit or discount the rest of your word, but that we are to dig diligently, study, that we may show ourselves approved, that we may rightly divide or share your word. So I pray for a blessing for each and every one of us and our viewers that as we continue to study your word and learn how to study your word, may we apply these principles so that we may see wondrous things out of your word. Mm. In Jesus' name. Amen. Amen.